Hey everyone, welcome to another video tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this bobble stitch cowl or scarf. Um, you can talk a little bit more about that later. I'll give you different sizing options in case you want to turn this into a scarf instead. Um, you can use any yarn you want, just make sure that you get the right size hook for it. So I'm using a 3.5 size yarn and an H hook. So to get started, we're just going to start with a slip knot. So we just wrap the yarn around our finger and then just kind of pull a loop through the inside of that little loop that we just made around our finger. So to make a chain, we're just going to wrap the yarn around our hook and then we're going to pull it through the loop. And that's a first chain. Yarn over, pull through the loop, that's two. And three, and four, so forth and so on. We want our chain to end in even numbers and the length of our chain is going to be the width of our scarf. So a scarf is usually anywhere between five to 10 inches depending on the type and style of scarf you're making. So I want this to be a five inch scarf. So see I've only got three inches. So I'll just keep crocheting until I have five inches and that's going to be the width of my scarf. Just make sure that you end in an even number. If you need some more sizing information, look in the description box below. So to move on to our next row, I'm just going to pinch this little, the last stitch that we made, and we're gonna chain two more. So now we're gonna go back to that stitch I pinched, or it's the third one from the hook, and we're just going to make a single crochet. So to do that, we just insert the hook, grab some yarn, and then pull it through that little loop. So now we've got the two, well, then we yarn over and pull it through our two stitches. So we're going to make a single crochet in every one of the stitches of our chain. Now that we have finished that very first row, see we've got a single crochet in each, we're just going to grab our corner over here and we're going to chain two. So I've got my first chain and my second chain, and then we turn our work around. And in this very first stitch, the one right next to the chain, is where we're going to begin to make our first bobble. So to do that, we wrap the yarn around our hook once, and we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch. And we're going to pull that yarn through, because we yarned over again. So now we have three stitches. So we yarn over and pull through the first two stitches, and we're going to leave two stitches on our hook. So yarn over, insert the hook back into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. See, we've got a couple more stitches, so we yarn over and pull through two stitches. And now we have three. So yarn over, insert the hook again, yarn over, and then we're going to pull through two stitches again. So we're just going to keep doing this until we have seven loops on our hook. So because we had a loop when we first started, that counts as our first loop on our hook. So we're just going to do this. It's a double crochet, but you're just doing the first part of a double crochet. You're going to do this six times, so you have a total of seven loops on your hook. And now that we have all the loops on our hook, see so we have all seven, we're going to yarn over, and now we're going to close the, the stitch, so we pull through all of our loops. So, and if you push your finger into the stitch as you're closing it, it'll create a little bobble effect, so it'll make a little bit of a bubble. So now we're going to go into the very next stitch and we're just going to make a single crochet. So insert our hook, grab some yarn and pull through. There we go, and we got two loops. So we yarn over and pull through the two loops. And just make sure that it's nice and tight because that's what's gonna close up the little bubble. So it's gonna look uh, nice and round. So then we go into the next stitch, and the next stitch is going to be the same as the very first stitch we did in this row. So it's your double crochet where you're only stitching in the first two, um, where you're crocheting the first two loops and leaving a loop on your hook. So remember that we're going to want seven loops on our hook, so we're going to make six of these um, double crochets. I guess incomplete double crochets if you want to call them that. So let me finish these up real quick. Okay, I need one more. If you need to see this slowly, just go back to the very first stitch that we made for this row. So make sure we've got our seven loops. Excellent. So now we just yarn over and we're gonna pull through all of the stitches. And as you pull through, 
um, my the little middle finger that's behind uh, all of these stitches I'm just pushing the, the bubble out just to make sure that it makes it nice and round so then we go into the next stitch and we single crochet so this is how we're gonna work the rest of the row so you're gonna make your little um, I'm just gonna call them bubble stitches so you make your little bubble stitch or your little puff stitch and then you're gonna make a single crochet and then you make your bubble crochet and a single crochet and you just keep going until you get to the end of the row so I'll keep working a couple more of these so you can see how I'm working these and I'll see you at the end of the row So now that I've made a couple of these, I just kind of wanted to show you what it's looking like so far. So we've got three little bubbles. So okay, I'm just going to finish up here. So now that I've got to the end of the row, so this is my last little bubble. I haven't made my single crochet yet, so I can show you. So this very last stitch right here, that's going to be our single crochet. That's why it's very important that you work in even numbers so that you can have this very last stitch. So this is what our first row of bubble stitches looks like. So now for our second row, we're going to just chain two and we're going to turn our work around. And this row is just all single crochets. Um, so we're going to go into this very first little stitch right here and we're going to make a first single crochet. So and then on top of our little bubble stitch right up here is going to be our second stitch. And there we go. And then the space right between them is another single crochet. And then one above the next little bubble is another single crochet. And this is just how we're going to work this entire row. So it's a single crochet in every stitch and it's one single crochet between the bubbles and then one on top of each bubble. Or yeah, I guess above each of the bubbles. So that way you can continue having an even number of stitches. So I'll just keep working um, a single crochet in each and I'll see you at the end of the row. So I'm here at my last stitch and see the very last one's going to be on top of one of my bubble stitches. And that is my last single crochet. And that is the end of row three. So see it kind of just frames uh, the bubbles and makes them pop out a little bit more. Now this next part um, for this next row you can do it a couple different ways. So first we have to start with our chain two and we turn our work around. Now you can either stack your bubbles, in which case you would start immediately with another bubble stitch, or you can make them uh, place one bubble in between each of the other ones. So if you do that, then you start with a single crochet first and your second stitch becomes a bubble stitch. So it just depends on the look that you want to give it. So I'll try to repeat it again as I'm, as I'm kind of working through these. So if you want an even, like even rows, of bubbles then stack them one above the other so for every first stitch of every other row which is the row that you make the bubbles on the first stitch of that row is always going to be a bubble stitch and then the second row is a single crochet and so forth if you want them if you want a bubble in between each of the other ones so that they're kind of alternating the location of them and they're kind of in between each other then the thing you're going to take you're going to alternate your rows so then your first um, stitch will be a single crochet and then a bubble stitch and in the row after that then it's gonna be a bubble stitch and then a single crochet sorry I hope I didn't overcomplicate that but if you have any questions on it just leave it down in the comments below and I'll try to do a better job of explaining it so I'll just finish working on this row and I will see you at the end so I'm nearing the end here of my row and see how I have just this last bit of the stitch left so I kind of try to make it so that my bubbles were in between each other so here in this very last one I'm just going to make a single crochet so I'm basically going to end the row in two single crochets instead of the bobble and then a single crochet that way it just kind of gives me room so that I can put my next bubble stitch so we chain two and we go on to our next stitch uh, our next row excuse me which is the row of single crochets so you're going to make a single crochet in every one of the stitches and remember that for every one of the bubbles it's one 
in between each of the bubbles and then one on top of each bubble so that you keep your same number of stitches. So I'm just going to keep working on this row and I'll see you when I'm done. So for this next one, I just finished my row and I'm just going to be switching colors. If you choose to switch colors, this is kind of how you do it. So you just grab your yarn and make sure you leave a nice long tail and you pull it through that last stitch. So the very last stitch you just crocheted. So make sure you still hold your other yarn um, and pull it a little tight so that it doesn't your hook doesn't slip out. So now I'm going to make my chain two. So for my first chain, I'm going to use both of the um, ends of the yarn, which is this little tail and the yarn I'm actually working with, just to kind of make it tight. And then I'm make, going to make my second chain. And then you could just kind of tighten everything. And we're going to just weave those in at the end once we finish our project. So now I'm going to go to my very first stitch and I'm going to make another bobble stitch. So, and you just work it like you worked the first, um, the first two rows of bobble stitches. So it just doesn't change. The only thing it changed was the color yarn you're using. So I'll keep working this row and it's going to be a bobble stitch or bubble stitch and then a single crochet in the next stitch. So I have finished my bubble stitch and now we're going to go into the very next stitch and make our single crochet. So remember to just kind of keep these nice and tight because the tighter you close out that first, that single crochet, the more your little bubble stitch will pop out. And you can help it by pushing it um, right after you finish your little bubble stitch. Just push it through um, as you're tightening it so that you can help make the little bubble just kind of pop out a little bit more. So I'm going to finish this row and I'm going to finish my the next row which is the row of single crochets and I'll show you how to carry your yarn. So if you don't want to weave in a bunch of ends and you're going to be switching yarn color frequently, um, in this case I'm going to be able to switch, I uh, just kind of carry my yarn through, which is um, I just kind of tuck it in and hide it and just kind of weave it in as I crochet. So to switch my yarn again I'm just going to drop my colorful yarn and grab the, the pink yarn and then just keep crocheting. So this very first row, which is going to be my bobble um, row, I could just drop the, the, the colorful yarn and pick up the next one and then start with my chain two and start crocheting like I normally would. So I'll just start doing that and make my um, little bobble stitches. And I'm going to crochet the same way I've been crocheting my other rows. So I'll make this row and then I'm going to make my row of single crochets. So when you get to the end of the row of the single crochets is when you start to tuck in the other color yarn. But because I don't want to have to crochet all of the, the rows all the way through, I'm just going to make a tiny sample here just so I can show you what it is you do. So I'll make my first little bobble yarn right here and then see how we've got our other colorful yarn. We're going to want to tuck that in. So let me get my single crochet and maybe I'll make an extra one here so I can, there we go. So I'm going to make my chain two, just pretending we got to the end of the row already. And I'm going to make my pretend row of single crochets. So hey, we're on the last stitch now. Okay, so you see this little bobble stitch? It's our very last stitch of the row. So I'm just going to tuck this one up in here so that I can uh, crochet it into the stitch. So I'll hold it over. Uh, I'll hold it over the bubble but under my hook. That way when I crochet my single crochet with the yarn I am using, it's tucked in under. So see how I could just pull it through? And then I could just go ahead and make my chain two again and continue my row. So I'll do that. Uh, I'll keep making another sample just to show you. So I'll make another quick bubble stitch and we're just going to pretend that we have, we're making a whole new row of these. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. There's our bubble stitch. And then I'll make my single crochet. And then I'm just going to increase it real quick. Here, I need to make a second uh, single crochet. There we go. So I'll do my chain two, turn my work around, and now I'm working my row of single crochets because I'm going to be switching my color again. So I'm making two rows of the pink and then one row of the rainbow color. So I have to constantly switch colors. So see, now that we're at the end, now I'm just going to switch my colors. So I just have to tuck in the colorful yarn one last time so that I can finish my last stitch of this row. So I tuck it in between the stitch and my hook and then I'll finish my single crochet with my pink. And that way it's kind of nice and tucked in. 
So now we just drop the pink yarn, pick up the colorful yarn, and make our chain two, and just keep going as if nothing happened. And that way you don't have a whole bunch of tails that you're gonna have to weave in at the end, because it's, it's probably my least favorite part of crocheting, is when I switch a whole bunch of colors, and then I have to weave in a ton of ends. I just don't like it. I don't know if other people do, but I just don't like it. So I try to um, just kind of carry my yarn whenever possible, especially with projects like this that I don't have to carry it through the entire project. Sometimes if you like work in the round for a beanie or something, you have to carry the yarn and then you have to use a lot more yarn than you really needed to. You don't really have to with this cow. I've been working on this project all day, as you can tell by the change in lighting. Um, I ended up just stacking the bubbles after a few rows because I decided it looked nicer. So it looks a little different. So for the length of a scarf, there are a couple of ways you can do it. You can, if it's a cowl, just kind of measure it to wherever it's comfortable. Um, that's at least what I do. I'll see if I can find any more information and add it to the description box below. But for a scarf, you make, generally make it the length of the height of the person you're making it. So I'm five foot two, so it would be 62 inches. And that would be a lot nice long scarf for me. Um, but I will put more information on that in the description box below. I'll have some scarf sizing and you'll have that information also in the free written pattern, which is also in the description below. So now just, uh, we just have to weave in our ends. So if you grab a, a needle, any needle that you can use with your yarn, um, a tapestry needle, a yarn needle, or a regular one, just kind of weave in, uh, put your yarn in through it, and then we're just going to weave it in. So I like to crochet in the, the shape of like, or not crochet, excuse me, um, sew it in, in like the square pattern or a triangle pattern, and you just kind of work it that way a few times. So just kind of stitch it in into like a square or a triangle pattern several times so that it won't become, um, your project won't become unraveled. But you can do it however you want. Um, it's just the easiest way I have found. And then once I just kind of try to hide it in and then I'll pull the thread a little bit to make it nice and tight, cut it, and then I can just pull my project again and it hides the little tail end. So I'll do the same with all of my little tails that are sticking out here of my yarn. And then I'll show you how to sew on the button. So we've got all of our ends uh, weaved in, and then I made this little little piece right here, and it's just a chain. Um, I had to make it as big as I needed to for my button, so I'm not going to give you a specific size, it just depends on the size of your button. Just make sure your button fits through it. So you make a chain and then connect it to the other side, and then just kind of a single crochet all the way around. I single crocheted around it three times, and that just made my little uh, buttonhole. So now I just have to measure where it is I want my button. Um, I'm gonna have to try it on my kid, but she's taking a nap, so <laughs> I can't try it on right now. So I'll just try it on my kid, make sure that it is uh, to place the button where I want it to be and where it fits comfortably for her, and then we just sew it on. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Um, the free pattern is available on my blog, and I'll link that in the description box below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I am at mode.bespoke. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>